Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This episode, we'll talk about the virtue of charity, and the fruits of the spirit of kindness and generosity, and I hope you've got some time on your hands for this one. When I was laying out plans for this season's episodes, I planned to divide the virtues up by relation to one another, and there's no denying that kindness and generosity have a lot to do with charity. The one thing I didn't plan on was that charity alone has been so badly twisted and misunderstood in recent years that this would probably have been the show's longest episode to date, even without the other two fruits of the spirit to deal with. Still, I'll try to sum things up as much as possible, starting with kindness. Kindness is very rarely misunderstood. It means friendly, generous, warm-hearted, understanding. Therefore, it's easy to see why it's closely related to charity. Being kind is one good way to exercise charity. Generosity is another one that's hard to get confused over. It's a spirit of giving. I don't think much needs to be said about these two, except that they're only virtues when you're using them to truly help someone with a view to their ultimate well-being. This means, for example, that if you're helping someone because you think they can pay you back, this isn't generosity or kindness. Even helping someone to make them feel better isn't necessarily a virtue, but helping someone with the intention of them becoming better people or achieving a better end is. The highest form of help that you can give someone is to help them get to heaven through moral, spiritual, or some other kind of assistance. Now for charity, and here there are some misconceptions. People think that charity just means giving to others, or what you give to others. That's only part of it, I'm afraid. Christ died out of love for us. While we were still enemies, the Lord asks us to love as he does, even our enemies, to make ourselves the neighbor of those farthest away, and to love children and the poor, as Christ himself. Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1825. I think this segment explains most of what charity is, if you know how to read it. Step 1. Christ died out of charity for us. Not only does charity involve giving, but giving in a total self-sacrificing way. This means that anything we may possess in this life, from knowledge, time, and money, all the way to our very life, needs to be something we're willing to give up to benefit others, and especially to continue obeying God's commandments. This doesn't necessarily mean we give up things like our desires or our personality, but self-sacrificing giving of any earthly thing for someone else is the truest expression of faith. Step 2. Even our enemies. There is an important distinction to make here. Yes, we are obligated to do good things, and even make sacrifices for the sake of our enemies as well as our friends. But again, we need to make sure what we're doing is for their true benefit. For example, if you have an enemy who's a drug addict, you could show charity towards him by helping him get out of his addiction. However, if you just give him a heap of cash instead, knowing that he'll spend it on drugs, that's not charity because you know your action won't help him. Likewise, if your enemy is a sleazy businessman who wants to use his money and influence to force anti-Christian laws through the political system, and you sacrifice to fund his efforts, this is not an act of charity. It's at least material cooperation with evil. Step 3. Love children and the poor as Christ himself. We need to show special charity for those who don't have any means of supporting themselves, or who don't have any possessions of their own, but especially for the most poor and helpless, even if they don't like us. These are the elements of charity. Step 4. Obedience to God's Law The last step, and by far the most important, is to be willing to make whatever sacrifice you need to, especially your pride, to do what God commands you to do. If you don't feel otherwise motivated to do this, you can do it just because it's the best thing for you to do. Even this shows that you have strong faith in God and in His will. This kind of charity isn't possible for human beings under most circumstances. They need a special grace from God to be able to show this level of virtue. I've heard people say that charity isn't a good enough word for this virtue because nobody likes being called a charity case, but the truth is, that's not the reason why this isn't the perfect word for it. The reason why charity isn't quite a good enough word for this virtue is that the way it's usually used doesn't imply the deep kinds of sacrifice that the virtue does. You see, the original word for this virtue is agape. It means a self-sacrificing act to benefit others in a way that goes beyond mere natural love. Now, there's just one last thing to get to, although it may still take a while. Although I am a Christian, you'll hardly ever hear me use the word love. And my reason is that this show is called Clean Cut, and I'm concerned with being very, very specific about everything. There may not be a single word in the entirety of the English language which is less specific, or more often abused or twisted, than the word love. 
There are many definitions of it that aren't the least bit virtuous, but for completion's sake, I'll try to deal with as many of them as I can before we end this episode. Definition 1. People sometimes use the word love to mean sex, or even anonymous, uncommitted sex. For example, in the phrase, Bobby and Tina made love. Nothing could be further from the virtue of charity. The intended goal of lovemaking, in this sense, is mutual pleasure, and often, a desire to deepen the relationship. And neither of these things is about self-sacrifice. Definition 2. Sexual attraction, as in the phrase, he loved her from the moment he first saw her. This is merely a desire. Some such desires are impure and lustful. Others are well-intentioned, but no desire is enough to represent a virtue. A virtue is about how you act and what you do. Desire is just about what you want. Definition 3. The various methods and behaviors classified as romance. The leaving of little notes, the whispering of sweet nothings, etc., and so forth. This one can be a little confusing, because when we look at God's relationship to us and our relationship to Him, there does seem to be an element of this from both sides. The scriptures, messages, and miracles from heaven on God's side, prayers of thanksgiving, virtuous acts, and devotionals on our side. However, none of these things is a virtue. They may be the result of virtuous conduct, but they're not charity itself. This, therefore, isn't what's meant by the virtue of love. Definition 4 a state of being predisposed to romantic feelings and inclinations towards someone, as in the phrase, you can tell he's in love even when she's not around. This one you hear a lot. In fact, pretty much any time somebody talks about being in love, this is the definition they mean. But being just an emotional state, this isn't the same thing as the virtue of charity, because it doesn't imply sacrifice. In fact, it usually implies a desire instead. Definition 5. A strong liking for something. This almost always involves a desire. For example, when I say, I love popcorn, or I love root beer, these are things I want, because I have a strong liking for them. But that doesn't mean I'd make a self-sacrificing act to benefit a bowl of popcorn. This kind of love is therefore not a virtue. Definition 6. Deep affection for a child or dependent. For example, the phrase, Matt helped his son with his homework because he loved him. Here we're getting into definitions much closer to the virtue, but still not quite there. Matt, for example, might be willing to risk his life for the sake of his son, or he might merely feel a sense of affection for the boy, but not really be willing to make any sacrifices bigger than what he thinks he needs to. This can easily coexist with charity, but it's not quite the same thing. Definition 7. Deep affection for a spouse or significant other. See definition 6, except with the added potential for romance. These are different definitions because you feel a different way towards a spouse than you would towards a son or daughter, but in the end, they're both feelings, and may or may not be strong enough to motivate you to make the big sacrifices. As with the last definition, this can easily coexist with charity, but it isn't the same thing. I hope now you can see the reason why I almost never use the word love to describe a Christian virtue. There are simply too many definitions of this English word, and it can be misunderstood much too easily as a result. Now, you might be wondering why I decided to spend Season 4 talking about the virtues. Well, the first rule of philosophy is to always define your terms, and I may be using these words in the near future. So this season is basically for helping to make a few things clear, namely that when I or the Catholic Church use words like these, this is what we mean. I hope you'll join us next season when we address a very important question. Why should I obey God anyway? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.